It is the touchline here on Y254, and we are hanging out with uh, Robert Osoro. And uh, joining us on this set uh, now is Eric Aganyo. He's a sports analyst, a journalist, and a man who loves youth and sports here on Y254 and all around the world. Eric, welcome to the touchline. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for yeah. the invite. What has been your highlight of the week so far? <laughs> Uh, my highlight of the week may be yesterday, uh, rugby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In New Zealand winning, that was good. Uh -huh. And uh, we're anticipating today's game. Yeah. Uh, I know today is uh, uh, there's a cocktail of lineups. Eh? <laughs> yes. Uh, we start by Liverpool. I think in the next few minutes they should be they should be kicking off with uh, against uh, Everton. Merseyside derby. Uh, Merseyside derby. Yes. Uh, we also have uh, Arsenal Chelsea. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It's an interesting game on Man City Brighton. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. It's a big one. We'll be talking much more of that when it comes to the fans. And also, we've got the founder and also CEO of the Waziri Super Cup here in studio with us. Salim, I forgot to ask you your highlight of the week when you were starting the show. Uh, my highlight of the week, I think uh, some of the people that were fated yesterday. Uh -huh, the, uh, yes. for uh, on, on Friday rather yes. yeah yesterday mm -hmm. for Ma Mashuja mm -hmm. some of them have earned it uh, mm -hmm. when you when you're talking about heroes of the nation yeah you're talking about what is the name of the lady who did a double in record what is the athlete the faith keep faith keep your going she's yeah. she's one person I think was under the tag of being of yeah. being a national hero because she has gone there she has gone out there mm -hmm. and uh, represented the nation in just one world record after world record so yes. that was my highlight of the week well, a span of one year, three world records in the name of uh, Faith Kipiegon. Well, for me, it's actually when it comes to rugby and that one uh, yesterday, the African Football League, it was all about the organization that uh, the Tanzania Football Federation put in alongside the Confederations of African Football and FIFA for that opening ceremony of the game between Simba and Al Hali as the inaugural edition of the Africa Football League. But for now, let's uh, concentrate with uh, the Waziri Super Cup that will be entering its uh, fourth edition this year in uh, Bungoma County. And also joining us to talk about that is none other than the founder of the Waziri Super Cup, Salim Waziri. Salim, the first question is usually Waziri Super Cup. What does it entail? Uh, it's about... When I started the tournament, I wanted to, to do something for the community. Yes. Having played football myself, and uh, I really never got to the, to the levels I wanted to, th thanks to my, uh, my uncle injury being shattered. Mm -hmm. So I said, how will I live my life through other people? Mm -hmm. So I started a football tournament, and uh, through the tournament so far, we have, we have managed to pick a couple of talents. Some have gone to Nzoya Sugar. One is called Hassan Beja. He's now at FC Leopards, the number 10. Yes. So I think from the tournament, there's there has been progress in it all. And I just said, many people start a football tournament again, Robert. What, what am I going to do different that will add that human, human touch into it? Yes. So I started feeding people, feeding the needy and equipping girls with sanitary towels through the very, very tournament. So I think, again, as I said, I sat on this very set when I was doing the first interview about was it a Super Cup. Yes. And here we are. And it's, 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 it's been quite a journey. So actually, I've just talked about you have done it for three years. This will be the fourth year that you're doing the Super Cup. And the gains itself that the Cup has brought in the people at uh, Bungoma County, how, have they be, how, how are those gains to the people? Yeah, <coughs> for, for the people, it's something they look forward to. You know, you know it's, it's, it's basically giving hope to the hopeless because if you don't do so much with your life, but there's this one thing that uh, as, a, as a people you connect to, uh, you be, you be, you be, I've, I've literally become the pride of, of those people because they know at some point in the year you might have had a, a terrible year yes. uh, from January to November but there's just one person who will come into my life in December and at least make me smile. So yeah. I think they look forward to it. Now I've started receiving a lot of calls because we are now at 75 teams and I don't know 
Yes. Have you ever heard of a tournament that plays 75? I want the likes <laughs> of Eric and you to assist me do that. But I want to find a criteria yes. to eliminate the teams because 75 teams, there's no way you're playing that competition. But then yes. again, you don't want to tell them it's too many teams because they want to participate in it. Yeah. Some have even gone as far as registering their, only, their own teams. Mm -hmm. They pick clan members. Yeah. So I pick Osoro, I pick Eric, mm -hmm. who are my brothers and cousins. We go and start training and register them with the FKF so that they come and take part in the tournament in December. Yeah. So it's quite a story. So I hear them and I'm like, it's quite inspiring. But then again, I think it's just what they look forward to. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that I've, I've, been, I've been that hope for them. Yes. Eric, you are a youth community organizer. You have helped the youths come up and everything. You have done some of these tournaments here in Nairobi. What do you usually look out for when you want to bring up a tournament like this? Uh, first and foremost, let me congratulate Waziri. I know I it's not easy, uh, and uh, hearing that you're doing a fourth edition, and yeah. uh, the way football uh, organizing a tournament, the hassles and tassels, I think uh, uh, that's a remarkable yeah, uh, a thing. And uh, to come to your question, uh, you look for something that can bring the community together. Yes. Because uh, uh, the beauty about uh, grassroots football uh, is not just football. It's a way of life. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, you find that these people come together. And um, what else are we, are we looking at? We're looking at now it being them owning it up. It's not a matter of you now yeah, as yeah. the organizer. Yeah. Yes. It is them owning uh, uh, that tournament. And you'll find that they will give you suggestions. Uh, they will run the tournament. And um, the beauty of it is that everybody would want to take part. Mm -hmm. Even when you're struggling financially, yeah. you find that you'll find youth volunteering to do Absolutely. the field, mark the field, and such kind of things. Yeah. And um, it, it, it brings out something interesting because it unites the uh -huh. community. Yes. It unites the hood, it unites the estate. Yeah. Uh, currently we are doing the Sakaja Cup also in, uh, in, in, in Nairobi yeah. Yeah. and uh, you can see that in the young people. Uh, the playing surfaces, yes, they are not as good as we would expect, but the young people are coming up and, yes. uh, and uh, uh, it's really interesting to see it. And uh, if we can have many Waziris coming up okay. in every, each and every hood yeah. coming up with that, uh, you'll find talents coming up, yeah. as he, he's mentioned, uh, uh, that um, they've been able to spot some talents and nurture them to, to, to higher levels. Okay. Uh, if we can do that, then it will be a beginning of a very uh, a big thing to come. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you ha we have talked about uh, one of the challenges that you are experiencing in this one is the, the amount of teams that are actually coming out. 75, even the World Cup, we don't do 75. <laughs> 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 you, see, you have seen the African League has uh, dropped from 24, to they eight. have brought in to eight yeah. teams, and now you've got 75. What are the other challenges that come up with? Because now you've got a whole year to prepare, but it's now October, and the first challenge is 75 <laughs> teams. What are the other major challenges that you experience in organizing such a tournament? Uh, many a time, sometimes the local politicians, because uh -huh. they don't do that for themselves. So yeah. they feel when Eric or Waziri comes up with a tournament, they want to run for a particular uh, seat. Yeah, 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 but they don't understand. You're <laughs> you, you, you simply just doing it for the love of the beautiful game. Yes. So some of them try and lay traps or they just start creating some PR propaganda that does not exist so that your tournament doesn't get the, the recognition or the oomph it deserves. Yes. So those are the, uh, the kind of the, uh, some of the challenges we go through. And then you understand sometimes in Western you might find that there are so many local tournaments, just yeah. small, small tournaments here and there. Mm -hmm. And then the, the pitches are not enough. And ah, you, yes. you look at the pitches that are available, uh, either in uh, secondary school or primary school. There are no local on, uh, community, community owned pitches that yes, you can just go and host your tournament. And we, uh, we understand that also these schools have been given restrictions because you might find that I will come there and Eric uh, and Robert to watch the game, but there are some people who have not come there to watch the game. They have come there for different reasons. So schools have been, have been prohibited from hosting some of this because, again, uh, was Robert, you're talking about the finals of this local uh, grassroots, yes. 5,000, 6,000 fans. Yeah. You cannot control all that crowd if, if you don't have enough security. And the, the other major thing that usually comes out is that when you watch the, there's a grassroots football tournament, the fan turn up that you, people usually come around to see these games from the community level, to just come and enjoy the games. Because like uh, one of the major tournaments that was done back home and I think it's also, I think, 
five or six years old is the Karamoja supermarket. Yeah, Karamoja yeah. supermarket. And you saw how those people throng to that market center in yeah. Samitsi. And those numbers shock the world. Kenyans were like, no, 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 this one cannot happen. But you look at Kotbiru, <coughs> we're having fans coming out and bringing it to the tournament. How come that we are coming out for the community, but we are not coming out for our clubs? I, I think it narrows down to the, 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 the turnout uh, uh, shows two things. One, passion. Kenyans um, are really passionate about football. Mm -hmm. And also, football is a unifying, f a unifying thing. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes to clubs, I think it narrows down to management and um, uh, organization of these tournaments. Yeah. Uh, because if you look at um, the local tournaments, the grassroots tournaments, the turnout is big. Because we the turnout is big. Yes. But uh, 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 there's a uh, Tasca playing Madare in, uh, in, uh, in Nyao Stadium. Yeah. The turnout is, is poor. I think it narrows down to now how is it organized yes uh, because you see when you bring the tournament close to the people mm -hmm. when you make the people be part of that mm -hmm. and i mm -hmm. think our clubs should embrace that bring out the community yes. because most of our clubs that enjoy a lot of uh, uh fanatic following yes are community-based clubs yeah uh look at shabana coming in yes shabana you'll find the community has rallied behind the club yeah. Look at FC Leopards, look at Gormaya, look at Moranga Seals has come yeah. in now. It's doing yeah. well because uh, uh, the fans have rallied behind the club. And um, I think when I come to organization, uh, the, the, the organizers of this, uh, this game should uh, have said in the past, why don't we have uh, 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 Kakamega Grounds as uh, uh, the, home, the, 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 the home stadium for FC Leopards? Yes. And you'll see that stadium filled yeah. to the brim, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bhungo Stadium. Because these guys love their club. Yes. And if that game will be played there, those who are in Nairobi will organize for transport. Yeah. They will they attend that match. Yes. You've seen Gormaya fans uh, organizing for transport and traveling all the way to Mombasa to support their teams. Yeah. So it, it narrows down to organization. Yeah. Let us accept that most of our clubs are community-based clubs. Yeah, absolutely. And if they are community-based clubs, first of all, rally the community behind that club. And then now the other fans will join in because there are those who are looking at and to, to, to go to a stadium that is full. Yeah. Uh, so if many of my friends are going to the stadium, I'll tag along. But if my, many of my friends are going to the club to, to catch the English Premier League, I'll also tag along. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, you see, yes. uh, if we can do that, because look at, I've seen uh, 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 what Waziri is saying when it comes to grassroots. Yeah. You find that that pitch is small. And people on top of trees. Yeah, absolutely. Watching that. It is not yeah. made for the fun. Yeah. Yeah. Watching that game. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it is too small, but yeah. people will be so filled because of the passion. Yeah. And because they identify with the tournament. Mm. Let our fans identify with our clubs. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you'll find that everything will, 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 will turn around this thing. Uh, I, I, when I was looking here, we looked at uh, in the three years that you have had this tournament, you have managed to feed over 400 families. Yeah, yeah. A cube of... Uh, 1,700 girls with sanitary towels and secured five sports scholarships. That's a big one. And uh, the question is, is it a one-man army or uh, do you have uh, sponsors and people coming in to help you out when it comes to doing such a tournament and for it to become a success? Yeah, when I started it for the past, let's say, let's say three editions, mm -hmm. it has been uh, breaking my back because I wanted to create... You know, you know, you know, Robert. Once you create, you create something that p everyone wants to get attached to it. Yeah. You take that conversation to any corporate yeah. or corporate in the world, and they see what you've been able to do because you have something to show for it. Yes. They want to really be a part of it. So I said, for my fourth edition, it will be my, man my manifestation year because I want now to all that I've been able to do for the three years to come now to the four, so that mm -hmm. it's not a story anymore. That because if you've not, you've not tried and tested it. There's no you can explain it to Eric okay. and yes. get him to understand what is the idea behind it. But so I went, I went alone for the past three years. Yeah. But now this year I've, 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 I've got a couple of uh, partners on board. So I think people have, have now realized that there are so many people out here that are doing so much for communities and football at large. So they, they really want to be a part of it. Uh, I will ask you about the scholarships because uh, that one is one of the major things that most of our players usually look forward to because you don't want to have a playing career after playing career what next 
these five players who got scholarships with Zetek, how did you come about that? Uh, it's a uh, Zetek also, uh, they have been partners over the years yeah. for, for since the first edition, and I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful yeah. because they, they tell you, yeah, you, you might be a, the, a, a wonderful footballer, mm -hmm. and how many players in Kenya will make it to the European leg? Very few. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You can only count Mariga and now Wanyama and a few others who, are, who have not gotten to the elite level yet, but yeah. they are still playing in Europe. So they, they asked me, Waziri, because if, if you, uh, we keep on providing funds, we are not helping. We are not helping the dream. Mm -hmm. But you have players here that... I went and sat down with a couple of them. I asked them, what do you want to do with your life? Some yes. of them were like, I don't want to play football for the rest of my life. Because, again, the infrastructure is not right. You cannot make it that easy. Yes. I want to go to school and learn. So uh, the head of marketing at Zitek University is called Wycliffe Serengo. Is the one who told me so every year yeah, from the uh, famous Serengo family. Yes, yes, we keep ah, Serengo. Max Serengo. Max Serengo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so he yeah. told me let yeah. let's let's be picking uh, at least two two players, uh, yes. two talented players who want to go to school every year. Uh -huh, so yes. now at least we have got five that are under this uh, sports scholarship program. Yes. Yeah. Well, and that's actually what you usually look out for in that you have something to take home for after the tournament and everything. For the Sakaja Super Cup, I think it has already begun. How is it going so far? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going on well. We have uh, over 300 teams uh, participating wow. in, uh, in Sakaja uh, Super Cup because uh, we have uh, 85 wards in Nairobi yeah. and each ward has uh, brought in four teams. So that is 85 multiplied by four. Yes. So how it's organized, it's played at ward at, at um, constituency level. Yeah. Mm. So, yes. like for example, Rosambo, where I'm really, really best, Rosambo constituency, okay. we have five wards, mm -hmm. and uh, each those are 20 teams. Yeah. They play against one another, mm -hmm. so the best two will we'll we'll move yeah. to the next to the next stage. Yeah. Because we are also targeting to have the final in December. Okay. Uh, now, when we pick two, two, two from uh, uh, the 17, we'll have approximately uh, 34 teams, yeah. which yeah. will now now go and form a tournament, it's kind of a World Cup style. Ah, but yes. first, uh, uh, the idea was uh, to bring football to the ground. Mm -hmm. And that is why we brought in each ward. Like, okay. uh, tomorrow we have big, big games in, in, in Roisambo. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the Saints playing against Gidurai All-Stars. That's oh. a big, big game. Yes. Saints is from my hood, that is Kaha West. Yeah. Where we are having uh, Saints will be playing tomorrow. We have Committee will be playing tomorrow. We have the uh, Kahawa Pride mm -hmm. and also City Sports. Those are the teams from Kaha West. Yeah. And um, the idea here is to bring young people together. Mm -hmm. And um, you, the first round of games, you could see clearly that this is what the young people are missing in Nairobi. Because you see, like, Kotbiro was targeting a few teams yes. around Eastlands. Mm -hmm. But this one is covering the whole of Nairobi. Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's being played in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if it's being played in the world, that means accessibility. Yeah, it's yes, the, yeah. the young people well, will yeah. access those fields, yeah. and uh, you could you, you can see the fan the, the fans coming to the stadium, yeah. the fans even old people coming to cheer their yeah. teams, and yeah. uh, it, it's it's a good feeling. Yes, and I understand when uh, 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 Waziri talks about now what he's done to his people down in Bungoma. Yes, uh, they're looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. At the end of every year, they know Waziri is coming. So if you don't go, they'll be so disappointed. <laughs> 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 and uh, <laughs> finally, uh, what is the end game? What is the future of Waziri Super Cup look like? Oh, uh, my my goal is to create uh, to create a team every single year, mm -hmm. because uh, last year we created with Buya Sportif. They are now playing Division Two. Uh -huh. I want to create a team from the tournament. Yes. Every year I create uh, a, a team, mm -hmm. and then uh, going forward. Again, the, the dream of the tournament, the general dream is every single year we open up a business. So uh -huh. last, year, yes. last year we started with, uh, we started with, uh, with a car wash. Mm -hmm. Where now, as, as he's saying, these this youths have got to find something that di distracts their minds from being a devil's workshop. So yes. keep them engaged. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, in partnership, we also have a title sponsor, thank God, this year mm -hmm. in 1xBet. It's, a, it's mm -hmm. a global brand. Yes. There will be... They will be the one to look for avenues of how to help the community in general because uh, yes. as much as they are betting farm, they are advocating for for responsible gaming. One of the things that came out with the betting companies are that interaction with the community and in that you need a program that actually runs to help the community. Yeah. Is that 
one of the reasons they are coming up to sponsor the Waziri Super Cup. Yes, yes, because again, we are looking, we are looking into, they're also providing, I think, $1,000 that will go strictly to feeding the needy and uh, equipping girls with sanitary towels. So yes. that is literally, there's nothing as big as that when it comes to community because people have got to eat mm -hmm. and girls have got to feel safe yes. uh, in, their, uh, in their own body. So mm -hmm. I think that those are, the, those are the, the greatest things that are going to come out of this uh, year's partnership with one expert. Well, finally, Eric, the, the thing is... Uh, what message uh, does uh, like the Sakaja Super Cup or the grassroots football community, because it's a, a major one in Kenya. When you look at grassroots football, it's a big one in Kenya. What is the message that is being passed to these youths in these tournaments? Uh, responsible living, because uh, we, we, we are urging them. We understand that uh, there is peer pressure. We understand that uh, things are tough. But uh, we are urging them to make responsible decisions. Yes. Uh, decisions that will not um, affect their lives negatively in future. And I know I will also appeal to, 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 to our leaders also yes. uh, to embrace grassroots sports. And you yeah. find that uh, if each and every leader, I've seen Cleophas Malala doing the same, if each and every leader can come in and bring in something, I'm sure uh, then we will be able to keep our youth busy. Yes. We'll be able to reduce the social evils uh, yeah. because, you see, as you said, uh, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Yes. And you find that uh, 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 this grassroots football sometimes gives people purpose, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, sure, especially yeah. over the weekend. If uh, I've seen the Sakaja Cup, like tomorrow, the games begin at 10 a.m. Uh -huh. So you see, they begin at 10 a.m., the first game is at 10, the next game is at 12, the next game is at 2, and the last game is at 4. Yes. So you see, you've occupied this young man the whole day. Carry yeah. a flask and some mandazis exactly. and sit by yeah. the pitch. <laughs> sit by the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Rather than now, uh, he could have gone to the base yeah. uh, yes. and engage in other, in other, in other ev uh, evil things. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, we're just telling them, let's journey together. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's a big one here in studio with Eric Aganya, a youth organizer here in Nairobi and also a sports journalist. And we are also with uh, Salim Waziri, who is the founder of Waziri Super Cup, as we talk about grassroots football and how these tournaments are there to empower the community. You are going to incorporate rugby, basketball in this tournament uh, coming up. It looks like uh, more of uh, employment opportunities for <laughs> people back home. Because yeah, it's a big yeah, tournament yeah. For <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, because uh, over the years I've been working with a committee of 15 guys. <laughs> yes. uh, you have to give people a chance to, to like yes. show what they can do for society too. So now this year, because we are incorporating the other two games, mm -hmm. uh, two sports, we are, also, we are going to at least have 25 members of the community who at the end of the tournament, yes. they'll be paid for the one week uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, of the sports festival that we are going to have uh, from the December 26th to 31st yeah. and then uh, the beauty is for the first time we're going to 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 have the tournament on new year's eve which will uh -huh. be the 31st so we yes. are we are looking forward there's a there's a musician he's a, he's a lawyer sensation he's called steve k and I then king it, yeah. king kaka mm -hmm. will be performing at the after party to usher in the new year after mm -hmm. the after the final has been played so yeah. it is it is literally going to be a football festival so yeah. i will tell you and eric to start mm -hmm. packing your bags <laughs> We'll actually do that, and it's a good one that we are having it here. It's actually in Webuya, Bungoma. Webuya Town, Bungoma County. Yeah. So if, let's say, a corporate wants to get in touch with you to go back home with you and sponsor these teams, how can they get in touch? Oh, uh, they'll just they can they can uh, write an email uh, to salimoziri79 at gmail dot com because we we, we we like it that way because some corporates want to be professional about it so that they have that paper trail in all if they want to be a part of it so yeah. that's how they can reach uh, they can reach me also uh, through my number which is 0715661547 so that we can have a conversation of how to impact societies you can repeat that one actually looking at that camera so that they can get it yeah. actually okay if you want to be a part of the dream you can reach me on 0715661547 yeah. Well, for Eric, I think uh, we brought you in uh, for, but we've got to have another conversation of the Sakaja Super Cup because it's uh, already started, it's going on at the moment. For you, what is the end game of the grassroots football here in Kenya? 
then them is to come up with uh, with talents yeah want to identify those talents because most of the time you find that uh, uh, some of these young people lack an opportunity to showcase their skills mm. and right now uh, 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 when we go to the hood they're able to showcase their skills and uh, somebody will spot it and uh, you realize that uh, there's a good player the first game the second game the third game definitely uh, you recommend that player to some of our clubs yes. and um, that way you see it gives young people hope that if I continue working hard, somebody will see me. Yes. Because there is the issue of visibility also. Um, the talents are there, but who is supporting them? Yeah. Look at, uh, for example, uh, the secondary school games. Yes. Uh, when you guys went to, 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 to showcase what was happening in, in Kakamega, uh, Kibet was yeah. taken was from that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, that's what we want to do. Yes. Uh, we give them an opportunity to showcase what they are capable of. Yeah. And uh, eventually you'll find that so many young people uh, are going to be uh, taken from these hoods and um, join academies internationally yes. and also nationally. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, as we're going to the festive season, you realize that many of these tournaments mm -hmm. will be coming up. And the usual question that we can ask ourselves is, is it also high time that we as Kenyans and actually the stakeholders of the sports industry here in Kenya, is it a time for them to rethink how sports is being structured and run because in these tournaments, uh, Waziri Super Cup, Sakaja Super Cup, the Clovers Malala, Karamoja, Safaricom Chapadimba, and high school football, as Eric has put it, is where the fans are. But when it comes to our major tournaments, our sports that are run by our sports stakeholders, our fans do not actually come. Is it time that we actually rethink that one? It is the touchline here on Y254, Erika Ganya with me and also Sal Mwaziri. Let's take a short commercial break and enjoy some of the international friendlies when it comes to football. England won against Italy 3-1. We also got France winning against Scotland by four goals to one. But it is all those conversations. When we come back, it will be all about the fan zone. to Bowen. Neatly done by Jarrod Bowen. Potential for England. 